Let's turn to attorney Alan Orr. He's the former president of the American Immigration Lawyers Association and founder of the Orr Immigration Law Firm. Alan, what is going to happen to all these migrants? Most, I believe, are from Colombia and Venezuela. I mean, I understand the short-term solution with churches helping them out, but what about long-term solution for them in California? So, as you've already seen, the community of California has wrapped around these immigrants to help them meet the day-to-day -day needs that they need to sustain um, with humanity and dignity. Uh, with their immigration cases, unless they're able to make it back to Texas, they're going to have to transfer their immigration cases to California, which may take longer for them to be adjudicated for their asylum claims. So here's what gets a little confusing, and our reporter, Tony Waterman, also touched on this in her piece. So the two groups sent to Sacramento never went through Florida. They were approached in El Paso by people with Florida-linked paperwork, sent to New Mexico. From New Mexico, they were put on a private flights to Sacramento. How can something like this even happen? Uh... Well, I mean, I think we can say it's a conspiracy theme because I think that's the way they're probably going to get charges all the way down and back to Florida to the individuals who actually paid for this activity to happen. Because if you're in a conspiracy, you don't have to know exactly what happens at the end of the conspiracy, just that you partake in the conspiracy, which could be sending payment, all of those things through the funding. So it had to be a scheme to have that level of coordination, which was once again using humans as a tool, a political tool, which really shouldn't be happening. And the quantity of individuals that we're talking about is around 40, in, 40 to 50 in California right now, which really doesn't address the number of migrants coming into the country at this time. So it's totally political. So Governor Newsom um, has lashed out at Ron DeSantis, saying he's a small, pathetic man, and suggested the state could pursue kidnapping charges. So, Alan, how realistic is that? Is that, I mean, if you lure people onto a private, into a charter plane and they don't know where they're going, they haven't been told what's going to happen to them, can that, um, can that amount to kidnapping? Yes, it can. It can and has in the past. So, I mean, and as you see now, the difference that DeSantis has learned from Martha's Vineyard, that none of these people were children, as some of the younger adults that arrived in Martha's Vineyard, and most of the people who were sent to California were men. So I sort of say that that's one of the other levels to sort of address an international law with regards to shipping minors uh, through, the, through the United States or anywhere in the nation, actually, of other nationalities without them sort of knowing. So there had to be a scheme to select that individuals. I don't know if it will get exactly back to the governor. The governor should be held account by the citizens of Florida who will need this money during the hurricane season when things happen there. It's $12 million that he's spending on immigrants that aren't even in his state. So Ron DeSantis, for his part, has said nothing about this. Is there a remote, remote possibility, Alan, that he had nothing to do with it? No. Same vendor used in Martha's Vineyard, which used in this case. Florida is definitely involved. We've already seen the, the paperwork back to Florida, and anything that happens in Florida, we know it has DeSantis' name all over it. So whether he owns up to it, because, of course, he might not want to make an omission in the press right now, he's definitely on the line for what is happening. And we'll see as his political campaign sort of sets up how he's started to stomp on this immigration platform of how he's harming individuals. Um, Alan, finally, on a federal level, I know states make these decisions on their own, but on a federal level, is there anything that can be done to make sure something like this doesn't happen again? Because it keeps happening. Yeah, sure. I mean, Congress could act, but we haven't seen Congress act on anything else yet to sort of pass a law. DOJ could step in, but they're stepping into a void that would just lead to a judicial fight, which, once again, needs to be resolved by Congress because the Supreme Court may not, it would take a long time to get there to get a resolution in the first place. There are federal laws that are violated when you sort of send people to other places with the expectation of work when it doesn't exist for enticement. So we also don't want to so use the federal government as a wage issue in this big election political year that's coming forward. This is definitely a place where the state should step up and private citizens should step up and recognize the humanity and dignity of individuals who've made it to this country. Yeah. All right. We'll leave it there. Thank you so much.